I don't think it's too outlandish to state that when designing a video game, giving feedback to the player's input is super important. And whether you're designing a first-person adventure game, third-person action game, or a top-down strategy game, at some point during development, you're going to want to allow your player to interact with things. And so, giving the player feedback when they try to interact with things is, by association, really important. There are, of course, many ways we can give the player that feedback, but it's usually in the form of some kind of selection outline and potentially paired with a button prompt. Initially, you might think that it's just as simple as adding an outline to your mesh's shaders, and so you create the outline effect as part of the rendering pass. But if you've ever toyed around with shaders, you'll know that outlines can sometimes be kind of messy. It's often tricky and restrictive to get mesh-based outlines to look good. So let's use the alternative and do it in post. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can extend Unity's post-processing stack to add our own outline post-process. We're going to write a screen space shader that will draw an outline around anything our camera can see and write a script to allow us to control the parameters of that shader within a post-process profile. And as a bonus, we're also going to write a very simple shader that will highlight our character when they're hidden behind something in our scene. Let's go ahead and get started. I have this scene here with a character in a little environment and my usual go-to camera controller rig. In this instance, let's say I'm building out a little strategy game and I want to be able to mouse over my player character here and have them highlighted when I do so. There are a couple of ways I could add an outline to my character, including building an outline shader into the character's mesh themselves, but I'm choosing to do this as a post-process because not only do I think that that will yield the best looking results, but it will also give me a lot more versatility and enable me to add outlines across various objects in my game, regardless of their shader properties. So the basic premise with how this will work is that when we mouse over an object, we'll push it to a separate layer. That layer will be rendering to its own camera, which will have our outline post process enabled. And then it will draw a black image with just the outline. We'll then combine that outline with our original image using another post process. The first thing we'll do is generate our outline itself and get an outline around our character. As I've mentioned, we're going to be using the post processing system for this. So if it isn't already installed into your project, head into the package manager and grab it. I've already got a post process on our main camera here, just to make the scene a little more vibrant. We're actually going to write two different shaders for our outline and two different post process effects. For now, we'll start with the outline itself and deal with the compositing later in the video. Post processing scripts are weird because they're actually comprised of two different components, a settings class and a renderer class. We'll start by creating our outline settings class. These settings are essentially everything we'll want exposed to the user in our inspector and we'll control properties within our shader. Here, we'll create some float parameters for settings, thickness, depth min, and depth max. And then next, we'll create our renderer class using the settings we just created. This class requires a render method where we'll tell our post process what it needs to do. We don't need to do anything complex in this method. Essentially, we just want to grab our settings, send them to our shader, and then render the screen image using our shader. To do this, we'll grab the property sheet class from our render context. A property sheet is just a wrapper that automatically makes a material for us to pass into the command buffer. So thinking about it in the same way we'd set up any other material, we'll set out our properties here like this. And then we'll call the blip full screen triangle method on the command buffer using our property sheet, AKA our shader, which we now need to actually write. Post-processing shaders are a little different from the old shader lab ones you might be used to. Unity have started to move away from shader lab and are now leaning further into HLSL instead. If you're like most of the population, and find yourself a little overwhelmed when it comes to shaders, it shouldn't be too difficult to get your head around, as thankfully HLSL is incredibly well documented across the web, including the always excellent documentation pages from Microsoft. Additionally, the resources over on Unity's post-processing GitHub page are actually a great place to start, as all of the code for the post-processing stack shaders are written in HLSL and are available to view there, as well as all the utility and helper functions that they use. Anyway, back to our shader. At the top of our shader here, we'll start by adding our includes and referencing the standard HLSL library functions within the post-processing package. We'll then set up our main camera texture and the camera's depth texture, as well as the samplers for them, and then set up our custom properties. We'll create our struct with properties for our UV, vertex, and screen position, and we'll also create a method for calculating the screen position of a given vertex using the projection params property from the standard library we included. In our vertex shader, we'll populate our struct, making sure to flip the image around if the graphics API has its UVs flipped. And then we'll start with our fragment shader to build the outline. Essentially, this works a lot like a blur shader. We're going to take our pixels and offset them up, down, left, and right by our thickness. We'll then sample our depth texture, returning the length of its vector, and smooth step that between our min and max value settings. This will allow us to more closely tune the outline around the depth of our objects. And finally, we'll return the result. 
Okay, so now we're ready to add our new post process. If we actually add it to our main camera here, nothing will happen, but the whole screen will go black. This is because the entire world is being rendered to our camera. So the outline is actually being rendered outside the bounds of our frame here. What we want to do then is create a new camera specifically for rendering our outline. Let's duplicate our main camera. This will be our outline camera, which we'll want to keep in sync with our main camera. So we can write a little script here to update all of its settings to match. Now let's go ahead and add a new post process and our outline effect. Then we'll need to make sure that our camera is rendering to its own layer, which we'll call outline. And if we go in here and set our character onto this layer, we now have an outline. If we move other objects in the world into this layer as well, we can get an outline drawn around them too. So moving a game object to this layer causes their outline to be drawn, which means that we need to have our character swap to this layer when they're mouse over and then back again when they're not. I've gone ahead and set up this script on our main camera here. It shoots a raycast out into the world and gathers anything it hits with a selectable object script attached. When the user mouses over it, the onSelect method of the script is called, and similarly, when the mouse exits, the onDeselect method of the script is called. And so, in the select method of the script, we can tell the game object, in this case, our character, to swap to this outline layer, and similarly, in our deselect method, we'll move them back to our main layer. This swap layer function here is just an extension method I use to more easily move objects between layers. Just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to disable the outline camera for a second, but if we interact with our character and take a look at the inspector, they should be swapping between layers when we interact with them. So, now that we've got our character swapping into the layer and our outline rendering to our camera, the final thing we need to do is composite this outline image on top of the original image from our main camera. To do that, we're actually going to want to render our outline camera's output into a render texture, and then mix that render texture into the output of our main camera. So let's go into our outline post process and change a few things to get it to render to a texture instead. We'll add a static render texture into our script and then tell our effects to create the texture and render to it. Now let's write our shader so that we can composite our outline with our main image. This one is a pretty straightforward shader. We'll simply take in and sample a texture and then combine it in our fragment shader along with a color. And finally, let's create the post-process script for this. We'll just add some settings for our outline's color, and then we'll also need to retrieve the static render texture from our other post-process script, and then assign it for our shader to use here. And now, if we add our composite post-process to the stack on our main camera, we should be able to see both our character and their outline composited together. We can change the color in our composite settings, and of course, play with the thickness in our rendering settings. What I really love about doing an outline as a post-process like this is the level of versatility it creates for us. We now have a really simple setup for drawing clean outlines around objects with relative ease. As I'm sure you can imagine, there are a lot of avenues you can take this. Now I could leave it here and end the video. However, something I've noticed is that if our character is entirely or somewhat obscured by another object, we can still get our outline if we select them. And I really like this, but I'd love to also be able to see a better silhouette of our character when they're obscured by things. So real quick, let's tie this whole thing together and make some adjustments to our character object to make that possible. Rather than messing with our character's shader and making variants or anything crazy like that, we're actually going to cheat a little bit and have a super simple clone of our character that's always there, but only visible when our character is obscured by something. So let's duplicate our character's mesh and make it a child object so it will remain in the same place as our character. And we'll call this Ghost. Then let's make a new shader which we'll call Unlit Occlusion. Now you can do the work to style this however the heck you want, but I'm happy enough with a default unlit shader with a color property. The key difference is that we're setting the rendering flags here to only draw when obscured. So we'll set our Z test to G equal. Let's create a material for that shader and add it to the parts of our ghost object here. As you can see, our ghost is intersecting with itself and causing some weird results. To fix this, we basically have to make another camera that renders our character independently from the world. So the main camera will render our world layer only, and then our new camera will render our character and the outline layer, with the clear flags set to don't clear and the depth above our main camera. Then our character's main object will either always be on the character layer or the outline layer, but our ghost object should always be considered part of the world layer. And now when our character is obscured by something in the world, we can see more of them through this ghosted silhouette effect. It's a super, super simple hack, so it obviously won't work in all use cases, but when it does, I think it adds a lot to the visual presentation that was otherwise missing. 
And that's it for today's video. This is just a starting point, but hopefully this has been useful to you and I'm curious to hear if any other applications you might be thinking of. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, please do consider hitting that subscribe button as you'll get to know when new videos from me go live. If you'd like to see more from me first, however, please do consider checking out the recommended video on screen now. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.